In this video, I'll walk through a few examples of evaluating some definite integrals using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So first, this fundamental theorem of calculus is if you have the integral from a to b of f of x, then the fundamental theorem of calculus says that this will equal capital F evaluated at B minus capital F evaluated at A. And capital F is just the integral of F of x. Sometimes that's written, actually oftentimes, that is written as F of x, and then the, the limits here are put right there, the limits of integration. So, or sometimes called the boundaries of integration. So um, let me just clarify real quickly the, the integral of f of x. This is where the integral of f of x equals capital F of x. So we're just saying capital F of x is, is being used as notation to say the integral of whatever this function is. So over here we have the integral of 1 half x plus 1 from 2 to 4. So the antiderivative of 1 half x is x squared over 4 because the antiderivative of just x is x squared over 2 and we have to multiply it by this 1 half here so x squared over 4 plus the antiderivative of 1 is just x I'll put that in parentheses and then I'll use this notation here I'll say from 2 from 2 to 4 and then remember when we uh, subtract we evaluate the function, this antiderivative, this integral, evaluated at the upper number first. So this equals 4 squared over 4 plus 4 minus 2 squared over 4 plus 2. And simplifying that, we have 16 over 4 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8, so I've got the 8. Minus 4 over 4 is 1 plus 2 is 3. So 8 minus 3 equals 5. And just to make ourselves feel good about that, to see if that works, let's look. The integral, the definite integral, is thought to be the area under the curve. So if we have some tick marks, this is going to be kind of roughly drawn, but this 1 half x plus 1 has a y-intercept of 1, and it goes up 1 and to the right 2. So that's the next, the next point, and an up another 1, and over another 2 would put us right here. And this is at the point 4. 3 and this point right here where x is 2 is at the point 2 2 so evaluating that integral would give us this area I'll put it in green this area here well area of a trapezoid is uh, 1 half base 1 times uh, plus base 2 times the height. So think about this. Let's just label this. This would be a distance of 2 and this base, turn this trapezoid sideways, this base over here it has a height of 3 and this one over here has a height of 2. So you have the area equals 1 half times 3 plus 2 times the height of 2, that's this 2 here, and so 1 half times 5 times 2, well 1 half times 2 is 5, so the area equals 5, 1 half times 2 is 1, <laughs> and then times 5 is 5, so it all, it checks out. Okay, that's good, that's good. Now, let's look at the next one. The integral of sine of x evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Well, the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. Evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. And remember, when we do this, we go from the top to the bottom. No matter what the numbers are, even if the top number is greater than the bottom number, that's talking about the integration limits here, or the boundaries, 
Um, you have to go in the order that it's given to you. Be, be careful about that. So we have negative cosine of 2 pi minus, because we're following this exactly, minus negative cosine of 0. And negative cosine of 2 pi. Well, cosine of 2 pi is 1. So negative of that is negative 1. And this is plus minus a negative is a becomes a plus. So now I can keep writing plus cosine of 0 is 1. So this area is 0. How is that possible? Well, this integral is 0. I should say the integral is 0. Because if we were to draw a rough sketch of sine of x, remember, we're taking, we're finding the area about this function, not the antiderivative, but the, the little f of x, if you will. Well, if you were to graph f of x, or sine of x, then you would get something like this, where this is 0, and this is 2 pi, and the area above the x-axis gives us a positive integral, and the area below the x-axis gives us a negative integral. And it just so happens that these two, I'm not going to call them semicircles because they're not exactly semicircles, but these two shapes are exactly the same area. One is positive and one is negative. Those cancel out to give us, in the end, zero.